Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science, and today I want to discuss two body operators in second quantization in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. In the video on one body operators, we learn how we can write them in terms of creation and annihilation operators that allow us to capture all the subtleties associated with systems of identical particles. Today we're extending this analysis to two body operators, which include the important example of the Coulomb interaction between two particles. Let's go! This is the second video on how to write down operators using second quantization, and the focus is on two body operators today. The discussion builds on the video on one body operators, so if you haven't seen that one yet, just follow the link in the description and come back to this one after that. Today we start with the state space of two particles given by the tensor product of VQ with VQ prime. We also consider an operator G QQ prime that acts on this two particle state space. For a system of n particles, the total state space is given by the tensor product of all single particle states, of which this two particle space is a subspace. For the operator, we can promote G QQ prime to act on the full state space in the usual manner by considering its tensor product with the identities of all other single particle states, but as always we simplify the notation and omit the identity operators. Operators like G here that act on two particles at a time include the important example of the Coulomb interaction between two charged particles. If we now move to a system of n identical particles, we know that exchanging any two particles leads to exactly the same physics, so that our state space is no longer V, but instead a subspace of V, spanned by totally symmetric states for bosons or totally antisymmetric states for fermions. In a similar fashion, the operators that act on a system of identical particles must stay the same when we exchange any two particles, which means that we must work with totally symmetric operators on the particle exchange. In the case we're looking at today of operators that act on two particles at a time, we obtain a symmetric operator capital G by setting it equal to one half, sum over Q and Q prime from one to N of G Q Q prime. And we insist that Q must differ from Q prime. This sum runs over all QQ prime pairs from 1 to n, so that the action of this operator doesn't change when we exchange any two particles. We have to insist that Q is different from Q prime, because a term where they are equal is in reality a term that acts on a single particle, and that is already covered in the video on one body operators. In this expression for G, we have included a factor of one half here, but this factor is just a number, so it doesn't really change any of the physics of particle exchange. We could have picked any other constant and the physics would be the same but we choose a half because it leads to more convenient mathematical expressions down the line. An operator like capital G acts on all n particles. However, it is made of individual operators that only act on two particles at a time, and an operator like this is typically called a two-body operator. Similar to what we saw for one-body operators, working with two-body operators in first quantization leads to a very large number of terms which makes mathematical manipulations cumbersome. Therefore, the objective of today's video is to write a two-body operator in second quantization in terms of creation and annihilation operators. If you remember the video on one-body operators, the derivation there used the symmetrized and undersymmetrized tensor products, which made it rather long and tedious. Today's is much simpler, because it builds on the results we already got for one-body operators. Instead of dealing with symmetrized and undersymmetrized tensor products, today we're going to deal directly with creation and annihilation operators. This will actually be very good practice for us to become more familiar with manipulations involving creation and annihilation operators, which is something essential when we work in the second quantization formulation of quantum mechanics. In fact, this is precisely the very first thing we're going to do. We start by playing around with creation and annihilation operators to derive a very useful result that we need later on. Here I have the commutation relation for bosons and the anti-commutation relation for fermions. Two things about these expressions. First, I am replacing a ui dagger and a ui by a i dagger and a i, like we have done a few times before to simplify the notation, and all that happens is that we implicitly understand that we're always working in the same basis. Second, we typically use the letter a for creation and annihilation operators of bosons and the letter c for fermions. However, today we're going to use the letter a for both types of particles, so we replace ci and ci dagger by a i and a i dagger for fermions. We do this because we're going to write compact expressions that are valid for both bosons and fermions as long as you remember the correct commutator or anti-commutator algebra for each type of particle. Let's start with bosons. We can spell out the commutation relation as AK AJ dagger minus AJ dagger AK equals delta JK. This implies that AK AJ dagger is equal to AJ dagger AK plus delta JK. 
For fermions, we have the corresponding anti-commutation relation. And we can also rearrange it to get AK AJ dagger equal to minus AJ dagger AK plus delta JK. We can write a single expression capturing both bosons and fermions like this, where we have introduced the eta factor, which is plus one for bosons and minus one for fermions. We can derive a similar expression when both operators are annihilation operators. In the case of bosons, they commute so that AK AL equals AL AK, while for fermions, they anti commute, so AK AL equals minus AL AK. We can again combine them to AK AL equal to eta AL AK. The real expression we want to derive is the following. Consider the product of four terms, AI dagger, AK, AJ dagger, AL. This here in the middle is simply AK, AJ dagger that we have up here. So we can substitute in this result and we get this. Multiplying through, we get this term plus this term. In the first term, we can see that these two annihilation operators are given by this. So we can rewrite the whole expression as eta squared AI dagger, AJ dagger, AL, AK, plus the second term, which doesn't change. So delta JK, AI dagger, AL. Eta squared equals one. So we actually get the exact same result for both bosons and fermions like this. And this is true as long as we remember that the creation and annihilation operators obey the corresponding commutation or anti-commutation relations. And this is of course the reason why we insisted on writing compact expressions valid for both. These sorts of manipulations are extremely useful when working in second quantization, so you should be comfortable with them. You never need to remember any of these relations. All you need is to be confident in the manipulation of these operators so that you can derive them quickly when you need to. Moving forward, what we will need today is that this product of four operators here is equal to this sum over two terms here. So now let's move to the real point of the video, which is to write a two-body operator in second quantization. Let's start with a special case. Let's imagine that the two-particle operator G Q Q prime can be factorized such that it is equal to the product of two single particle operators, FQ times HQ prime. As we discussed at the beginning of the video, we write the totally symmetric two body operator G as equal to one half sum over Q and Q prime of G Q Q prime for Q different from Q prime. We can then substitute the assumption we're making up here about the factorized form of the two particle operator, and we can write it as a half multiplying sum over Q of FQ times the sum over Q prime of HQ prime minus the sum over Q of FQ HQ. You should convince yourself that this expression is correct, but very briefly, the original sum omits the terms when Q equals Q prime. In this first term here, we have all possible cross terms, and this includes Q equal to Q prime. So what we need is this second term here that removes the Q equals Q prime term. Before moving on, we also know that this here is the product of two operators acting on the same state in subspace VQ, so we can write it as FH sub Q to emphasize this fact. And you can think of FH as another operator that is the product of the first two. With this in mind, each of these three terms here, here, and here are now simply one body operators. Remember from the corresponding video that one body operators F are given by the sum over all single particle operators. And we can write one body operators in second quantization as equal to the sum over IK of the matrix element FIK and then the creation operator AI dagger and the annihilation operator AK, where the matrix element FIK is given by UI FUK. Using this result, we can write G as equal to one half, then the sum over IK of FIK AI dagger AK, sum over JL of HJL AJ dagger AL, minus sum over IL, of the matrix element of the product FH with indices IL times AI dagger AL. The indices I, J, K, L are of course dummy indices because they appear in the sums, so the choices I have made here are simply for convenience. We can now move this sum and matrix element to the beginning, and we rewrite the whole expression like this. To make some room for the rest of the derivation, let me erase the working we had up to now, and let me copy up here the latest expression we got for G. Now this product over four operators is exactly this expression up here 
that we conveniently derived early on. So we can replace it to get first this sum with two creation and two annihilation operators, then this sum over creation and annihilation operator, and then we still have this last term here that we copy as is. Let's focus for a moment in this middle term. The delta function means that we can perform the sum over j straight away, and we end up with the sum over i, k, l of u, i, f, u, k, u, k, h, u, l, and then the creation operator a, i, dagger, and the annihilation operator a, l. I have explicitly written out the expression for the matrix element, because now I can move the sum over k to the middle here, and I get the sum over the outer product of u, k with u, k, which is simply the resolution of the identity. This means I get sum over i l of the matrix element u i product of f with h u l times a i dagger a l. This is just the matrix element of the product f h with indices i l, so this last expression is now equal to this third term up here, so that the middle term cancels with this third term. This means that we can write a two-body operator given by the symmetrized sum over g q q primes as equal to one half and then the sum over four indices of the matrix elements f i k h j l, and then a i dagger a j dagger a l a k. This result, of course, is true under the assumption that we can factorize the two particle operator g q q prime into two one particle operators f q and h q prime. So now we have this expression for a two body operator in the special case where the two particle operators g q q prime can be factorized. Extending this to the general case is actually straightforward. We can always write a general two-particle operator g q q prime as an expansion over products of one-particle operators with some expansion coefficients. The factorization up here is just a special case of this general form in which all expansion coefficients c are zero apart from one of them. You should convince yourself that you can always write any two-particle operator like this, but just to give you a simple example, consider a one-dimensional two-particle operator that has a harmonic form x1 minus x2 all squared, which is a very common potential in physics. So how can we write it as a sum over products of one particle operators? In this simple example, we can expand the square to get these four terms. Each of the terms is a product of some power of x1 and some power of x2 with some coefficients in front, so it is indeed of this form here. So let's go back to the two-body operator g. First it is equal to this. Replacing the expression here, of g q q prime in this sum, we get this. We can now move the sum over alpha beta to the front, and we get this rearranged expression. Each of the terms in the sum for any alpha or beta is of the same form as this term up here for the product of two one-particle operators. This means that we can use the result we got for the special case when the two-particle operator could be factorized, and we get one half sum over alpha beta of the expansion coefficients, and then sum over i, j, k, l of the matrix elements of f alpha and h beta, and then the sequence of four operators a i dagger, a j dagger, a l, a k. For the final step, we first need to consider the matrix elements of the two particle operator g q q prime. We write them as g i j k l and set them equal to this bracket in the two particle tensor product space. Replacing the expression up here for g q q prime, we get sum over alpha beta of c alpha beta of the matrix element of f alpha times the matrix element of h beta. This expression for the matrix element is precisely what we have up here if we combine the sum over alpha beta of c alpha beta together with these two matrix elements. What this means is that we can replace all the terms that depend on alpha beta by the matrix element g i j k l and it is precisely what we will do in the final slide. So as promised, we can finally write the two-body operator g. It is a symmetric operator given by this sum over all pairs of particles, and we can write it as equal to one half sum over i j k l of g i j k l a i dagger a j dagger a l a k. And g i j k l is the matrix element of the two-particle operator in the corresponding two-particle tensor product space. So this is the final answer. This is how we write down a two-body operator in second quantization. The expression is valid for both bosons and fermions, and although today we have been using the symbol A for both, in general we will go back to using A for bosons and C for fermions. 
So before we wrap up, how can we conceptually understand what the operator does? We start with two particles in states k and l, and end up with two particles in states i and j, and the matrix element tells us the amplitude associated with this transition. If we compare this interpretation to the one we discussed in the video on one-body operators, we see that they are very similar. One-body operators induce transitions of single particles from one state to another, whereas two-body operators induce transitions of pairs of particles from two initial states to two final states. The very last thing I want to note is that the order of the terms is important. In particular, the matrix element here has the order KL, whereas here the order is LK. Of course this doesn't matter for bosons, because AL and AK commute, but it matters for fermions because they anti-commute, so there is an extra minus sign if you exchange the order of the terms. One and two body operators pretty much cover all the operators that you'll encounter in physics. When written in second quantization, they provide a very compact form and a very powerful formalism to study systems of many identical particles. And I encourage you to check the many applications of second quantization in the videos linked in the description. If you liked the video or would like to send me suggestions for future videos, please subscribe.